I just saw Alejandro Jodorowsky's is the dance of reality and I loved it. Now I was a bit skeptical at first considering he hasn't made a movie in well over 20 years, but if this isn't a return to form, I don't know what is. Now this isn't the type of movie that I suggest all of you watch because quite frankly, I know some of you are going to hate it. But for those of you who have the ability to enjoy a more surrealistic approach to filmmaking, I highly suggest you check it out. Now when watching a film like this, it's best to understand that although there is a narrative, the majority of what's happening isn't necessarily literal. Part of the reason why I enjoy watching shows like South Park is because they often use the episode as an opportunity to make social commentary. As someone who naturally likes to dissect things, part of the fun in watching a South Park episode for me is figuring out exactly what they're commenting on. That same enjoyment exists when watching a scene from a Hodorowski movie, but it's delivered in a way that you're able to learn it for yourself rather than have it hold your hand. And obviously I'm not saying that being literal is a bad thing. Most of the movies that make my top 10 of the year are generally pretty straightforward, but I will say that just because a movie isn't literal doesn't mean that it's random bullshit. I've seen quite a few movies that could only be described as random bullshit and I don't really care much for them. For me to love something that's different, it has to be different with a purpose. And Hodorowski is basically a god when it comes to this. Another important thing to note about this film is that it's partially autobiographical. So whereas The Holy Mountain was mostly making statements that applied to all of society, this one is telling a more personal story, making statements towards events that affected him personally. In every second of this picture, I am giving my blood. I am giving my life. My mother was an humiliated woman. Always she wanted to be opera singer. And the family obliged her to work selling things in a store. To make her an opera singer was important for me. To the singer, I make her improvise. She singed with that orchestra. And then Adán made the music, the orchestration. I searched an opera singer with this breast. My mother was a big, big breast, like this. And well, she always was trying to to not show, but was too enormous. Now, as you can probably tell, this man is also quite the entertaining character. So if you found what he just said as hilarious as I did, I would highly recommend the documentary that came out recently called Hodorowski's Dune. Now, I didn't search up any interviews or behind the scenes footage until after I watched the movie, but it was clear to me that the alternative choices made in the film were ones that were made with purpose. Now, the statements being made with each individual choice are not something that you're going to be able to fully comprehend after your first watch. Some of the connections are quite loose, and some of them are painstakingly obvious. And I think that that kind of variety is important when making a film that you want people to get more out of with repeated viewings, because it helps to have your audience members feel as though they understand at least some of the statements on their first watch. Now you might think that this is a movie that you won't be able to enjoy unless you dissect it, but there's so many layers of depth and entertainment to be had that it's never boring. You can show up to the movie and not give two shits about the metaphorical statements being made and you'll still get your money's worth. Yes, it is an artistic film, Film, but it is far from being a bunch of random bullcrap that you can only enjoy if you interpret it. If you're going to judge it on a level of cinematography, performances, or music, every single one of those features were great. And after I watched the film, I learned that a few of the actors are actually Hodorowski's children, which is insane to me because although I noticed a resemblance in facial features that I thought was just part of the casting, they managed to pull off some pretty terrific performances. I have uh, three children. My son, Bronte, who make, should play my father. Anda, ponte el traje. My son was playing my father. No! It was a psychological uh, explosion. Fuera de mi cabeza, ideas traidoras! Bronte with the acting, he, because he's a real, real actor. Do you know, in order to be an actor, a real actor, not a star, you need to be a saint. He's a sainthood. And he, he have that. He do think no one actor will do it. And there was my wife, Pascal, making the costume, making the colors, giving color to a life who was gray from the beginning.
I do have some minor complaints about the movie. Near the beginning of the film, there were some moments where the child actor looked like he was smiling when he was supposed to be crying, but even then I'm not sure how much of a legitimate complaint that is because it only appeared that way when his head was at a certain angle. And throughout the rest of the film, he was pretty great. There were some effects in the movie that were pulled off through computer animation that I thought would have been better without. Now some of it looked pretty great, but others would have looked better with a more practical approach. There's also some scenes where computer animation is really the only option for showing what you want to show, but I found myself being upset that they didn't have a bigger budget, because although it's something that's not really within their control, it is something that would have made those scenes a bit better. Even though more convincing effects would have made those scenes better, at least they're appearing in a film that's supposed to be absurd and surrealist rather than one that you're supposed to take completely seriously. This movie has quite the sense of humor, and odds are if you're laughing at something in this film for being ridiculous, you're kind of supposed to. Anyway, I really loved this movie, and I can't wait to watch it again so I can love it even more. Obviously, I've only seen it once, but I would say that it's my favorite of his films since my all-time favorite, The Holy Mountain. It's refreshing to see an expressive piece of art that can be different with a purpose when so many other films have come out trying to do that but have failed to have a point. This is definitely going to make my best of the year list, and I'm giving it an 8 out of 10 for now. And I guess we'll see if that number gets any higher on my second watch. And depending on who I'm watching it with, maybe I'll get even higher on my second watch. Oh, oh just go to touch you, you know. <laughs> don't don't be shy, baby girl. Shut up. Shut up. Just shut your mouth.